Okay, so start then. Okay, hello. Today we are going to discuss the multivariate regression mo regression spins, marks. So this is not this is this is a nonlinear model. So a linear model, you can find nonlinear relationship with linear models if you a priori know the nature and manually made a change. So the consideration of partners, for example, you have a additional terms to create a polynomial regression, or maybe you create a set function. It's really important that you know when to apply the steps. So even though you can check some nonlinear relationships in your linear model, you really not be, uh, need to know them before. That's maybe the, the most challenging part. And the, the, in this kind of model, uh, we'll find the important nonlinear relationship present in the data. So you don't need to know one or find that you see uh, making an EDA. So you create this first, it can help you to find nonlinear relationship and maybe you can apply to a linear relation, uh, regression uh, for the production model that you are going to use as they are much faster in production. So to extend linear model, we can use the polynomial regression. It extends the linear model by adding extra predictors, obtaining by raising each of the linear predictors to a power. So for example, to a power this time. So if we, you have one predictor, that would be the, the polynomial function. Generally speaking, it's unusual. Use a D greater than three or four. As the larger D becomes, the easier function fit. A overly flexible and of the shape as it tends to increase the presence of multicollinearity. So yeah, it tends to overfit. And the piecewise constant regression is a step function which breaks the range X into beans, uh, like the like an instrument, and fit a simple constant. Maybe the mean, the response of each beam. Uh, if we define the good points at C1, C2, and CK in the range of X, we can create a dummy variable to represent each range. For example, from if C1 to C2 is true, then the concept would be one. C1 for X would be one. And then, we need to repeat that process for each value of edge and its range. As we saw, we can fit a linear regression based on the new variables. So in this time, rather than applying directly the variable, we just create a dummy variable. That's for the state function. So it adds, is this value will have a one, in that case we'll get the maybe the mean for that particular range to, to get a function like this. In this range, we apply a constant, in the other range, another constant. In, in this way, they shape the, the function. So in this time, we can see a picture of how a linear reaction would fit. And then a second degree polynomial and a third degree polynomial that really changed to the. And that's the, the, the two ways to extend the, the linear models to nonlinear relationships. So let's explain the Mars models. It's an algorithm that automatically creates a pacewise linear model after wrapping the concept of multiple linear regression. 
So it's like they create many rela uh, linear relationships and break it by nodes or good point values nodes. It will first look at the single point across a range of S values where two different linear relationships between Y and S achieve the smallest error, a sum square error, that result that what results is known as a hinge function, where A is the good point. So why try to do is okay, I have a, the before slide, I have this linear relationship where I can place a good point to reduce the error the most I can. And making that analysis, they find, oh, this is the point that reduce most error. And then, it, okay, what's the second point that could reduce the error? And they find it here. And they repeat that process, that process until the R square is less than 0 0.001. So the change in the R square, you know, like the R square needs really to be that number just that. When they reduce, when they apply a new node, how much does this change? Because the R square is better, higher is the number. And they start to add the points, four, five, Once they have all the points, all the good points, they need to apply a pruning process, which is consists in using cross-validation to remove nodes that do not contribute significantly to the predicted accuracy. To be more specific, the package using R to perform general cross-validation. Uh, so the package that we use in R it uses a, a process, it's not a K a cross validation, a K4 cross validation, it's a general cross validation in the package that we are going to use in R, which is a shortcut for linear models that processes an approximate leave one out cross validation error metric. So, they automatically uh, do that. They do this, but we can then later use a uh, K cross validation manually. So we are going to use this package and uh, deploy recipes GPO two uh, for gra uh, data grabbing and awesome plots. Uh, Earth is the package that we are going to use to apply the Mars models. Caret to apply cross validation. Add sample and partnership to show how to do the process in the tidy models way. And also B and PDT for interpretability. And we are going to use the AMES is AMES data set from the AMES housing package, making this split. So when we apply the model to the data, to our train data, to play the search price, we see this model. And it explains that it selects 41 of 45 terms and 29 of 308 predictors. So when it turns out about terms, it's talking about the coefficients. So we are taking 41 coefficients of the regression. So it produced a 45 nodes. So in, in the pruning process, it reduced uh, four four nodes, and we can see some of the nodes here. So, we get the, uh, counting also the intercept, we have in the in this variable 
and not in this point. And we can see how the function is split. So we have a function for this part, a, a coefficient for this part, and another coefficient for this part. And the number of predictors, yeah, it's the number of predictors after applying. Angel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ju just a comment. Uh, in that variable, gross living area, uh, I believe the cut cutoff point is 3194, right? No, no, the cutoff point would be this one. Yeah. This is, I think, the slope. Exactly. So uh, the 3994 will be the, the cutoff point, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got, you know, the numbers from, let's say, zero, right? So 394, 3194, and then the other, uh, you know, line will be from 3194 to, you know, whatever number, you know, you get. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. That, that's the, the way you, you know them. And yeah, the point is that this package apply at the domain variable automatically. So we use recipes to, to make this. We can see the same number of predictors. So we step down, then we apply prep, break, select. We take out the select price because it's, it's not a predictor, it's our target. And we count the number of columns and we get the same numbers. So that's the information that we get in the first line of the summary. Then they explain the, uh, the breaking point to stop adding nodes or putting points. And also some metrics related to the accuracy of the model, including the R square. And this is the error of the general cross-validation. And we also can use the function plot to see how the general uh, R square is related to the number of terms. And they explain how they select the, the, the stop point of the pruning process. So instead of taking all the predictors, they stop here in the 41. It is important to point out that this package have the capacity to access potential inter interactions between different hinge functions. Uh, so we can also change the degree of the functions. So uh, by now we have just been using uh, the variable in that way and just find the good points, but we also can find interactions between points. So if we have if we have the degree and we take the sum or take the in the coefficients, we will see the interaction between these these numbers. So yeah, it's really powerful because you 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 know just check the individual a nonlinear relationship where you also can check the interactions. Maybe this was the most interesting part of this model. And uh, if you compare to the GAM models, general additional model, that is the, I, I was studying in the introduction to statistical learning, and that's the model that they explain for this chapter. So to me, it was a really surprise to see that Mars also check interactions. So, so how we can tune this model? In this time now, using cross-validation, not the general cross-validation that use the air packet by default. So we have, Two, two parameters to to two. So degree, the maximum degree of interactions 
where really is any benefit uh, assigned a greater than three degree interactions. And the inner prune, the maximum number of terms, including intersection in the prune model, where you can start, start out with 10 every space by. So that's the recommendation they use. Uh, training this model takes just a little bit of time. So they they create a, a, a data frame with a span grid where they, yeah, it's just a, a data frame with these numbers. So we have one, two, three with the two and one, two, three onto the 12 and they start onto 100. So using Karel, we need first uh, set the seed. We take a subset of the data because in the ads, we just need to place the predictors and not the response variable. In the year, the response variable, the method if error, the metric is the square root of MSC. And we're going to use 10 tensfold cross validation in the, within this grid. We can check what was the best option. We are going to use any prune and qualified prune and the degree two. Uh, we also can check the, if we use uh, results and then apply filter uh, using the best degree and the best uh, and proof, we can check also the metrics that our model would have. And we can see the, the, the result using the ggplot function, which that really is really convenient. And also get the summary of the MSC. So what's the mean, the median, the maximum values across the folds. In the example, you can also examine all the faults and check any problem if they are, if they follow a normal relationship or they are skewed, that, that could be related if they are over three or something like that. But we have a really real, real value in, in, in a particular fault. So the tiny model approach will have a benefit over the current uh, uh, method is that the search price is an right skew distribution. And in which our, uh, our first process, we didn't normalize, we didn't apply the law to this, uh, to this variable. So the the tiny models would be in this way. We first, we need to define the model. We need to use the mass function, set the model as regression using the engine elf, and then set the tuning variables that we want to improve. Then we apply our recipe. So we make all our predictors and uh, uh, dummy variables. Then we include both the recipe and the model in a workflow. We create a workflow object. And we use the, the resample package. And this is the main benefit. We can stratify our data by search price. So we will really sure that each fault will have a high and low values of the sales price. And then we can use the tune package. We add the workflow that we created to the tune grid uh, and get the metrics. We can show the best. Uh, I'm showing the, the three first rows. So the, the our first, our best model is using two nodes 
and one degree. So it's, it's really more simple to the other one. That's the way that as we apply different is a strategy to Spotify them all. Uh, and here is our final model that we can use to make predictions. So we are selecting the best and finalize this, this model, the mass work problem. Uh, the future importance, the big package important. We make sure the impact of the prediction error as proportion of the total error features are included. So generalize cross validation. That's is the method that they are using. So we take our original model, uh, the number of features and uh, that we're going to use the point in the in the method that we are going to use to to represent and then we create a plot with with the process it's a g plot to object and we can see that both results using the general cross validation on the rss are really similar they have the same shape and we see that the most important variable is the ground leaf area. So what they do is, may, is taking the error of the variable and measuring and make a proportion to create importance. It's like a, a relative importance. So for that reason, both variables have the same measure. However, it does not measure the important for a particular hinge function created for a given feature. So in this case, you see all these parts are predictors. Uh, they not take consideration how important was the good point. So to see the effect, we need to create a plot for each predictor. So we take the example of this variable and also this variable in, in, in both together. And we can and we can create also these this plots. And so we can see the good point of the living area that was 3,000. Or oh, maybe I, I think this is the I took this picture from the from the book. So as uh, our partner, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit lower than three thousand. That was the point that I was watching last time. But this we can see where is the 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 good point and where we can find it for each variable. And also we can create a three plot using these functions. So, so our final thoughts. Pros, natural handles means the styles of predictors. So quantitative and qualitative predictors, you can add both to these parts. Requires minimal feature engineering, performs automatic feature selections. A highly correlated predictor do not impede the predictive, impede the predictive occurrence. Then finds the important nonlinear interaction present in the data. The cons are is a slow or quick train. Correlated predictors can make model interpretation difficult. So it's like the same benefit. You don't need to take out the correlated predictors when you are trying to interpret, uh, to understand the model, you will find a difficult situation because you are, you have many relationships to to the to our target variable.
And that's all. I don't know if you have some doubts or you want to comment something that we told before. Okay, so you actually explained very quickly about the, your chapter seven, because I just thought that when I read it, it's a little bit quite a lot of information in it. But anyway, so thank you very much for the, your good explanation. And then, yeah, I think that this one is uh, kind of like a, a little bit, yeah, I, I thought they are a little bit complicated than I thought, but the thing is that your explanation is quite simple. So it has helped me to understand this chapter a little bit better, so. Hmm. Yeah, it, maybe they, uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe I think that this one is actually reminds me about the kind of, uh, what is called uh, some kind of a spline growth regression model. So it is actually try to try to do the optimizing the number of nuts that we can try to find the estimate the maybe maybe price in this case. So the thing is that this approach is actually automatically figures out the, how many features we have to include at the same time. When we include those features, how many nuts we gonna be needed to to the to the to develop the model with the strong predictors so which is very nice because the spline growth model that i mentioned just before is uh, just that is actually kind of a kind of a model used uh, used by used in uh, used when you have a kind of a very uh, kind of a time series or longitudinal data set and then, but the thing is that this one is a kind of like a also reflects the some kind of a cross-sectional data set can be used to optimizing the depend, optimizing the number of nuts and then a number of features to predicting the some outcomes. So yeah, I think this is great. So so uh, so how about you, Richard uh, Ricardo? So what do you think about this? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm good. I just want to point out that mm -hmm. uh, there was a section in this uh, chapter mm -hmm. that talks about the implementation of the Mars uh, algorithm mm -hmm. to extend it to classification problems. Okay, so that there's a section mm -hmm. 7.6 that applies mm -hmm. the Mars to the attrition uh, data. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe um, you know, when uh, Angel uh, incorporates this into the book notes, mm -hmm. um, maybe he can take a look at, mm -hmm. the, at that section, okay? Because uh, usually the Mars is uh, related to a regression problem, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, there's an interesting, you know, application of mm -hmm. this same algorithm to the, to the attrition uh, uh, data. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something to you know, to, to, to look at, at too. Mm. Yeah, maybe like they just change the this part and only the same. So maybe for that reason I didn't do that. But basically they just make sure that all the variables are factors, no ordinary mm -hmm. variables. They split the data the same and they just put here the predictor check the best after applying cross validation and, and, and check the model. So yeah, mm -hmm. they, they, they don't make any special explanation uh, how the model works in the, in the classification there. They just, hey, you just can pass and they will solve it somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, yeah, but, but what, what, one of the things that you know we found out is that the Mars uh, can be applied to, uh, you know, like a logistic regression can be applied to classification. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's you know, really uh, powerful problem well. too. So that's good yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah, no. right. Yeah. yeah, you're right because the linear re regression is not applied to classification, but right. Mars is also so flexible that also can can achieve it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really, really interesting. Okay. 
Okay, so in this case, actually chapter seven used some kind of a, um, like a Boston housing sales price data set, but yeah, I just keep trying to, cause when I'm reading this chapter, actually, I just keep trying to think about the where, how we can, how I can these things, these modeling approaches can be used for my research question or my research subject, et cetera. So, okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. So, cause what is really interesting about this, uh, it is allows, uh, allows us to the automatically identify the number of features at the same time with the number of knots that we can use for the model. So that's the kind of a very interesting part for me to understand cause by using, cause as you can see here in the graphs, you can actually see, you can actually find that there is a kind of a one knot in here, in here depending on the different features, right? Right? To, to estimate the sales price, right? So this is a kind of a very interesting part because uh, each, this Mars actually allows us to the identifying the, these features. At the same time, try to determine the, depending on the, in response to the, these features, they also uh, like identifying the how many knots we needed, and then at the same time, where those knots gonna be located, depending on the these features for the modeling optimization. So that's kind of actually interesting things to find, because for the predictive power, predictive purposes, the uh. If, uh, not not only for the predictive purposes, maybe some kind of interpretation purposes, knowing that this, identifying that these kind of knots and then where this is located is also very useful information about the, that actually allows us about the different slope changes, right? Like this. So that means actually these are the kind of a, one of the, some kind of a threshold points, threshold point to understand about the how price level gonna be changed depending on the these kind of uh, knots. Cause uh, depend based on before and after the knots, the, the regression line is the change, like a slope is changed or something like that. Cause uh, those kind of things is also gives us a lot of implication or interpretable kind of a result not only for the predictive purposes, just only for the kind of a interpretation of the result of the model by itself. So that's what I thought about this model. Cause, cause you also briefly mentioned about the GAN model, like, a, like a to, to reflect the complexity of the data set. Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of a good, yeah. I also agree with that point because when we when we use the GAN model, actually generalized additive model, we what we can find in the our result like a summary, we actually have a what how depending on the each each variable we actually finding out the kind of a complexity complexity dimensions of the model like a. Like if the complexity is a two is the like a quadratic, and then a three is the cubic, et cetera. Actually, this kind of a complexity gonna be give us about the, depending on the what kind of, depending on the, our X variable for the each variable, we can actually try to automatically figure out, figure out that these kind of a nuts. And then these kind of a nuts actually very helpful to determine about the where, uh, then not before and after the then not we can actually classify the our data set based on the these things as a kind of a multiple category so based on the, those kind of a multiple category and then uh, maybe we can uh, try to interpret the what's the difference between the before the nuts and after the nuts or in the middle of the nuts between the nuts etc so so that is actually what I did for the, my doctoral dissertation too. So yeah, when I read that this one is actually very interesting, but a little bit, 
uh, what I little bit hard to understand is uh, for the predictive purposes, how this one can be applied to the, my future research. So that's the kind of my issue. But anyway, so thank you very much because uh, you just explain explain the, this chapter very quickly. So let me type the maybe end.